Hello, I'm Diane Schumacher. Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. This month we'll follow HCC women's basketball on their march towards nationals. First up, men's basketball. The Dragons head down 95 for a date with Maryland Juco rival Prince George's. Gary Digital Williams anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Coach Dole's Dragons enter the game with a 4-19 record, looking to upset a legitimate contender for the D3 Region 20 title. This will be Howard's final game of the season. They did not qualify for the Maryland Juco Tournament, and they will not be going to the Region 20 Tournament. Basketball analyst Chuck Nagel will be with us for this Maryland Juco battle. So, Chuck, what is it going to take for Howard to end this season on a high note? Gary, this is the final game of the season for Howard, so I would expect them to come out tonight with great intensity. On offense, they need to push the ball up the floor, finishing at the rim whenever possible. They also need to play as a team, looking for the open shooter instead of going one-on-one -on -one all the time. Defensively, they need to keep the Owls out of the paint and away from the basket. They need to rebound strong, much stronger than before, and get the ball down the floor for those three-on-two and two-on-one easy fast-break opportunities. I think Coach Dahl's pregame message will end in two words, play smart. Prince George's enters the game with a 13-11 record. The Owls are the two-time defending Division III Region 20 champions. This may be the best time to play Prince George's. The Owls have lost four in a row. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Prince George's? Gary, the Owls are a playoff team, and I assume they're going to hope to play like one tonight. They're very effective against zone defenses because they play the clock well, they move the ball, and they look for the extra pass to get that open shot. They also like to get the ball down the floor very quickly before the defense is able to set up. Tonight that would be the Howard 2-3 defense. Look for their ability to do this or their inability to do this against the 2-3 zone is a major factor in tonight's contest. On defense, they'll use a 2-3 zone just like Howard, and at times they'll go from the outside shot to inside, but tonight at times they'll go inside to outside, which is actually a big part of their offense. Whether they go inside, outside, outside, inside could be a factor in tonight's outcome. Howard and Prince George's square off next. Let's go to the highlights. Prince George's comes out hot. Field goals on two of their first three possessions. Dragons in a 2-3 zone. Nice pass by Ochi Bynum to set up the jump shot. Howard going 1-3-1 against the 1-3-1 defense. Miscommunication though on a part of Jackson and Grant. A lazy pass leads to an easy basket for the Owls. Prince George's is jumping on the Dragons early. 13-2 lead for the Owls. Bynum uses the screen and buries Howard even deeper with the mid-range jumper. The Owls here are trying to space themselves against the 2-3 zone. If Howard doesn't move quickly, they'll leave somebody wide open, and that's the case here with Warwick. 8-21 remaining in the half, 16-point lead for Prince George's. Howard, again in the zone defense, the idea to pass the ball quickly. Here you see six passes, one bounce, easy layup for the basket. Prince George's is on a 10-5 run. Dragons need a play. Grant drives baseline, stops short of the basket. Bad place to stop, gives up the ball. The Owls come down, no resistance on defense. Sanders pushes his way in for the layup. Prince George's went into the locker room with a 19-point lead. Owls move it to Donnell Graham in the corner. Sets up Levante Sanders, throws it down. 16 points thus far for the Owls sophomore. 13.35 remaining. Prince George's now has a 21-point lead. The route is on. Kyle Davis looks to get something going for the Dragons. Owls catch Howard sleeping. What an inbounds pass by Patrick Johnson Agwu. Bynum, alley-oop to Sanders. Once again, we see the ability of the Owls to beat the Howard team down the floor. Easy basket. Happened way too many times this season. John Grant Jr. at the line. Missed free throw, Owls with the ball, but a double team created by the Dragon defense creates a turnover, which ends up with Kyle Davis coming down the middle for a real nice move for the basket. 7.58 remaining, Howard outscoring Prince George's 16-9 over the last five minutes. John Grant Jr. drives down the middle, draws all five defensive players into the lane, sets up Willis for the jump shot. 
Prince George has committed three fouls over the last two and a half minutes. The lead is down to 12. Juwan Grant, no good, but fights for the offensive rebound. Nathan Bonsu buries the second chance bucket. Howard fouled Johnson Agwu, but he missed the front end of the one and one. The Owls are 0 for 9 for the free throw line. Juwan Grant to the middle, great effort, gets the defender in the air, misses the first shot, but a great second effort puts the ball in. 3.29 to play. Prince George has failed to score in their last possession, but they redeemed themselves on defense here. John Grant played that very well, that two on one. Nice outlet pass. Terrell Willis all alone gives it to Bonsu. 6 0 run for the Dragons. Howard trailed by 23 points midway through the half. Dragons all of a sudden are within six. Down six, the Dragons can sense they're back in the game. So now they're hustling more down the floor, certainly more than they were in the first half. 2.38 remaining. John Grant Jr., Willis. Juwan Grant attacking the rim. Officials call a block. Juwan Grant flashes up the lane, gets fouled on the move to the basket, now gets a chance for two points with the clock stopped. Grant made one of two. Ensuing inbounds pass. Graham sees Jared Warwick open in the corner. Warwick lines up and delivers a big time shot. The Owls catch Howard sound asleep on the defensive end. Just under two minutes remaining, eight point lead for Prince George's. Warwick for three, no. Bonsu gets it rolling for the Dragons. Juwan Grant's up with him, goes to Grant. Wright is called for the foul, his fourth. And he's teed up for his fifth. A horrible turn of events for the Owls. These players have to learn, once there's a foul called, you can't argue with the referee. Just keep your mouth shut and hand the ball to the official where you can expect a technical foul. Juwan Grant has ranked among the top five scorers in the Maryland JUCO all season. He converted his first three free throws. He's the fourth free throw to make it a four point game. His twin brother John is there. John Grant Jr. with the putback. Howard emerges with five points after the right technical. 135 remaining, three point lead for Prince George's. Howard still in that zone defense, 2 3 zone defense. 16 seconds you can see left on the shot clock. Awfully early to take that shot. You'd think they'd want to take more time off the clock. Not a good one by Graham. Other end, 110 to play. John Grant working against Warwick. Can't get it to go. Warwick glides to the baseline and comes up with a huge rebound, and he's fouled by Grant. That's a good shot. He just missed it. Warwick made one of two. Prince George proceeded to make another stop on defense. Howard quickly fouled and Warwick made one of two again. 40 seconds remaining, Juwan Grant. The J.P. Herbert, wide open, doesn't take it. To Willis, outstanding defense from Cameron Williams. Jump ball, the possession arrow gives it to the Owls. Nice block by Cameron Williams. A terrible night at the free throw line for Prince George's gets even worse. Herbert grabs the rebound. Terrell Willis coming down the floor, 17 seconds remaining. Gets to the basket and keeps Howard alive. Career high 23 point night for the sophomore out of DC. Nice drive, time running down. The best thing to do here, put up the basket. That's what Willis does. 15.7 on the clock. Sanders looking at his options. Johnson Agwu pulls in the pass and he's fouled immediately. He made one of two, 14.4 remaining. Here's Terrell Willis. Once again, he sees daylight and forces the issue in transition. Willis goes coast to coast for another clutch bucket. Prince George's doesn't want to foul, so they're going to give up the layup. Ensuing inbounds pass, 9.1 seconds. Owls get it to Graham, and he'll go to the line. Graham made the first free throw. This will make it a four point lead. He misses, rebound for Grant, looking for Willis, picked off by Johnson Agwu. Time would run out on the Dragons comeback. Let's send it down to Ahmed Hosseini. You experienced a, a bit of a shooting slump in the first half. What could you have done differently from an offensive standpoint? Uh, as a team, we could have attacked the basket more, you know, allowed the free throw to open up our shots, better shot selections. It's just that simple. Now, you did follow up in the second half with a huge comeback um, when you trailed by single digits. 
Uh, can you tell us, Juan, what, what sparked this? Uh, the bench helped us a lot in the second half, getting our adrenaline going, uh, allowing us to keep pushing one another to turn the ball game around and really good, good shots attacking the basket. Terrell, tell us, um, talk to us about the time when you were down by three points because it was very intense. Can you give us a run through of how of your adrenaline? I thought we was going to win. Um, I thought we was going to um, execute. Coach said he had a good play, so I thought we was going to uh, execute it and win. When he missed the free throw, I got happy and saw it going to overtime more win, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Being your final game, what did you take away from this season? Never take nothing for granted. Uh, I took away, uh, we got to work hard, and it's, it's never over. We could have came back, but we didn't. Always play hard, like it's your last day playing basketball. For. Uh, I took away, it's always room for improvement. You have to fight through adversity no matter what. Awesome. Well, magnificent effort this season, and congratulations. Thank you. For Dragon's Let Update, I'm Omid Hosseini. My first guest was an assistant coach at Coppin State for nine seasons. He's coached at the college level since 1985. He just finished his second season at Howard. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Jay Dahl. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Coach, assess your team's performance against Prince George's. Um, I thought the game started off <clears throat> where we were very divided, out to get ours in terms of points, that type of thing. Um, and they jumped right down our throats, which is typical of Prince George, especially at their place. They're gonna, they tend to just come out and attack you. And that's what happened, we got way down. And uh, I had again some disciplinary situations down the stretch of the game and I ended up sitting two individuals and we made a run and we had a possession to tie the game. Unfortunately, we threw the ball away, um, but they came back from about a 25 point deficit. So um, we fought, um, I was bound and determined the last eight minutes I wasn't gonna play the two individuals that I had issues with. And so we were, we were undermanned, like we've basically been a, most of the second half of the season. And uh, for, I don't want to say the first time, but first time in a long time, I started to see some, some semblance of what I've been trying to get these guys to do in terms of playing as a team and playing with the effort and, and the discipline that they needed to play um, with. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to pull it out, but um, at least we didn't get blown out in the last game of the season. Looking back, what will you take away from the season? I know it was a very challenging season for you as a coach. Well, um, I, think, I think the first thing that, that I look at once the season's over with or who you got coming back and, and uh, what do you need to do to learn from the situations that uh, occurred in the year before. And uh, it uh, never really got ingrained into my guys exactly what our team mission was. Um, we started the season off very selfish, um, thinking about where we're going to be next year, um, as opposed to letting things take care of themselves. Next year will take care of itself. You know, I've been in this long enough where next year takes care of itself if you put yourself in situations where you take care of the, the present. and. Um, Unfortunately, we didn't do that this year and we suffered the consequences. What are some of the highlights? Because you've had some highlights this season. Well, you know, we, we uh, you know, in terms of, of, of as a team, I don't think there was a whole lot of highlights. In terms of individual stuff, um, you know, uh, Jawan Grant was named all, all uh, Juco second team, Marilyn Juco second team. His brother was third team. Um, Juwan was the leading scorer for a long time in the in the conference, and um, we lost uh, J.P. Herbert um, 
for, for a credit situation that really wasn't his fault. And he came back at the end of the year and um, just played very, very hard. And we missed him during the time that he was out uh, during the winter term. Um, you know, guys like uh, Nate Bonsu, um, he, he was up and down all year long, but, um, you know, in, in our meetings, he was very upbeat about stuff. Um, he knows that he didn't reach his potential. Most of the guys coming back, uh, Ryan Jackson um, became a defensive stopper for us. So that was a highlight because at the beginning of the year, we had nobody who had a clue what a defensive stopper was all about. And, you know, we were giving up over 100 points a game. And, and uh, as a coach, that's really hard for me to take and to, to deal with the mentors that I have to um, be held accountable for. Um, you know, they, they get in touch with me and, you know, 110 points, you know, did you play any defense at all? And so, so that, was, that was a good thing. Um, Taquan Hall, um, it was one of the little guys that just played his rear end off for me all year long, never heard a peep out of him. I'd like for him to become more of a leader because he can lead by example because he does all the right things. Um, unfortunately, he got, uh, he got hit in the nose. Um, might have been in the Harford game. I can't remember exactly which game it was, but it, we had about six games left to go in the season, and he broke his nose and was out the rest of the season and never got back in. Good luck next year. Thank you. <laughs> Up next, women's basketball head coach Maureen Shakru gets you ready for the Region 20 tournament. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Welcome back. My next guest came to Howard Community College from Athelton High School. She led the Raiders to a state championship in 2007. This is her first season as Howard's head coach. Maureen Shakru joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. So what's it like in the, the locker room now in, in preparing for the Region 20 tournament? They believe they can go and they can win. Um, we've played almost every, we've played everybody now, um, and the big schools aren't going, aren't going to this one. So that's the ones we've, you know, we've lost to. I think they believe in themselves, and I think they're very confident that if they go out on the court, they can do what they need to do. So is there an advantage for um, playing in the Maryland Juco tournament, knowing that a lot of those schools and the schools that you played in your regular season, they're going to be part of the Region 20. Is that an advantage that you played these programs before? Oh, I think so, because the girls know going in what we're going up against. And it's remarkable to me how much confidence they have in what they can do. They think they, well, that they, they think they know. They can beat anybody if they put it together. Um, Becca and, and Sam are, are great leaders, um, and they actually we push. I mean, both of them have played multiple games where they haven't set at all. You know what I mean? There's been more than one game that they've played 40 minutes. So what do you think it's going to take to win this tournament? Three good games. Three games of nobody being sick. Um, you know, three good games of them getting along as a group and, and working together to reach a goal. They believe they can win. There's now, no doubt. And, you know, I mean, they don't, they, it's not even a question. I don't even. The one concern I know that you have is, is with the rebounding. Yeah, we are, that's been a really, that's kind of been our Achilles heel all year. Um, and a lot of it is sometimes is positioning and where we need to be. Um, and, you know, it's amazing to me, Coughlin is like one of the best rebounders, but Coughlin's the point guard. She's your best rebounder on the team. I, yeah, and, five, and, what is she, five, six? Yeah, I mean, she's, you know, she's the best that, that can get in there. And she has no problem going in against, it doesn't matter how big they are, she's still going to go in. Um, but, you know, I mean, but she gets the ball. She's got a nose for the ball, and that helps us. Good luck the rest of the season and the upcoming tournament. Thank you. I hope we do well. It's time for the Region 20 tournament. Gary Digital Williams anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Howard's first assignment, the Lakers of Garrett College. 
The winner of the D2 Region 20 tournament receives an automatic bid to the national tournament. The other seven schools will see their season come to an end. The Dragons beat Garrett during the regular season, thanks in part to Sam Heisig's 19 points and 18 rebounds. Heisig will be in street clothes for the tournament, a big blow to Howard's chances. Heisig's injury leaves the Dragons with only five players. Basketball analyst Chuck Nagel is back for this playoff showdown. Chuck, how can the Dragons keep their season alive? Gary, this will be a very much of an uphill battle for Howard tonight, given the fact that they only have five players in uniform. What I would expect on defense is, again, 40 minutes in a 2-3 zone with very little pressure on the ball, hoping that Garrett just won't hit their outside shots. If they do, however, Howard's in for a long night. On offense, Howard needs to work the ball against Garrett's 2-3 zone, looking for open shots on the high post from the wing, and it at times driving the ball straight down the lane, which should open up those perimeter shots. Garrett enters the tournament with a 16-10 record. The Lakers have won five of their last six and lead the region in three-point field goals with 162. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Garrett? Garrett is one of the better three-point shooting teams in the league, so I look for them to continue to use the three-point shot as their primary offensive weapon. While most teams like to beat the zone from the inside out, Garrett prefers just the opposite. They use the three-point shot to open up their post players underneath the basket. This will create a variety of problems for the Howard defense. The winner moves on. The loser's season is over. Let's go to the highlights. First half, Detoria Higgins bringing it down for Garrett. Garrett is getting into their offensive set, but three of Howard's defenders have their backs completely turned to the ball. So we're painting a picture for what happens next, a wide open shot from the corner. Walking down the floor on defense, Garrett is within one pass from getting their offensive play set. You have five girls on defense with their eyes on the point guard, completely unaware of this potential shooter in the corner. Lauren Thompson driving. Thompson ties the game. Nice drive by Thompson, penetrates his own defense and puts up a nice shot off the glass. Nice second effort by Ebony Anderson, puts it right up, a chance now for a three-point play. And one bucket for Ebony Anderson. Howard reclaims the lead. This time Howard set up a little bit better in the 2-3 zone defense, but still you can see not moving fast enough to stop the shot from the corner. Lakers on a 7-2 run after made free throws. Here's Howard working against the press. Strong move by Coglin gets the return pass at half court, splits the defense, goes right in for the layup. Dragons made a stop on defense. First quarter winding down. Here's Thompson. Lauren Thompson attacks the rim. She gives Howard the lead. Thompson here using her quickness to get past the defense, splits the defense and goes in the lane for the shot. Second quarter, we're now tied at 18. Chuck, we've seen this quite a few times this season. Opponents getting open threes against the Howard zone. This is obviously Garrett's game plan. They found a spot in that corner, which is virtually wide open every time. Dragons just came up with an offensive rebound. Rebecca Coglin looking to make Garrett pay. Coglin gets to the basket, ends a three-minute Howard drought. Here we go. Garrett runs that same play, but this time to the opposite corner with the same result, wide open shot. Dragons just turned it over. Garrett is outscoring Howard 8-2 so far in the second quarter. Bria Coleman. Mia Lloyd has all day to shoot it. 15 minutes into the contest, fatigue may be starting to set in for the Howard Five. 10-2 run now for the Lakers. Another open look conceded by the Dragons. Coleman for three. Lee with the offensive rebound. Lloyd does the rest. Howard down 10, needs a stop on D. Dragon 2-3. Zone defense, Garrett once again, passing well and shooting the ball extremely well. Dragons now down 10, might be time to either extend the zone or come out and play man to man. High post, turnaround jump shot, that should be open all night long. One of the best ways to score against the zone, get the ball to the high post. Garrett really taking over in the second frame, outgunning Howard 19 to nine. Johnson sets herself up for a short jumper right in the middle of the floor. 35 seconds until the half. Mariah Stem, Lloyd. They get the ball to the high post, no resistance, easy basket. 
Dragons looking to counter after a nightmare second quarter. Dragons in their 2-3 zone. Pass goes to the wing. Here you must approach the shooter with a hand up, especially when they're shooting so well from the outside. 135 to go in the third quarter. 19-point lead for Garrett. Rebecca Coglin pushing the pace after winning the ball. Coglin attacks and finishes. 24-point night, the most points she's ever scored in a Region 20 contest, and she's doing it in the biggest game of her career. Coglin gets the ball and literally here goes down the floor all the way for a layup. She's shown a great ability to score in tonight's game for Howard. 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. Thompson gets to the rack. Johnson sparks the transition. Five seconds. Stem delivers a dagger at the buzzer. The 20-point deficit would be too much to overcome. Garrett ends Howard's season. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Ladies, only five players, but showed some heart as always. Uh, Liz, what are your thoughts following this game? Um, it's been a rough season overall, but I'm proud of us. We never gave up. We always play with heart, and we've fought through adversity. So I'm really proud of all the ladies. Rebecca, how do you feel? Um, I mean, it's a rough end. We were really hoping to win at least the first game. Um, I don't know, but since Sam got out, I think we just meant it just sucked, honestly. Just the whole thing sucked, but it is what it is. So what was your reaction when you first heard, Sam, heard that Sam was going to be playing? Crap. I mean, she's a huge part of the team, that's no doubt. And, like, not having her on the court, it's, like, it's missing one of our, like, top players. Like, my top to go kind of guard with me and Lauren at the top. Well, that's a lot of tops. But, I mean, it just sucked. What was uh, Coach Shakru telling you during the game? Calm down. Play your game. She, she, I mean, she didn't put too much pressure on us, so when she did talk to us, she really just tried to pump us up, motivate us, because she knew what was going through our heads. And what was going through our heads were majority of, like, negative stuff, like, oh, man, we're not going to come through this. Like, we're not going to be able to power through this and that. So, really, all she kept trying to do was motivate us. Just, you know, calm down, play your game, do what you do every season, you know. And it worked. Too that bad, it just came towards the end of the game, but it worked. Liz, when you look back at this season, what are you going to say to yourself? It was fun. It was a lot different, and a lot of teams saw us as an underdog and a joke. We would come on the court, and where's the rest of the team at? But compared to last year, it was definitely a big improvement, and I couldn't be happier with all of us. So, Rebecca, how would you categorize the whole season in general? It seems like a success, but do you feel the same way? Uh, yeah, definitely. We only had five, six players the majority of the season. Um, a lot of the games were tough, and we definitely thought, fought through it. So I think we, like, through, through adversity and everything else, people thought we weren't going to have a good season, thought it was going to be like last year. We definitely showed up to all of our games, and we played with heart every single one of them. I honestly wouldn't take anything back from this season. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take anything back. I think this was a perfect season, regardless of the losses in it. It was so perfect to me. Ladies, been fun watching you. Sorry that it came to an abrupt end tonight, but good luck to you going forward. All right, thank, thank you. you. For Dragons Layer Update, I'm Matt Stovall. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash HCC Dragon Sports. Thanks for watching, and remember, go Dragons!